Well, I was born at uh, Nanaimo and 37th Avenue, and I attended Tecumseh Elementary School and Gladstone High School, and then I went away and to the Northwest Territories for three years and to Toronto for 13 years and came back. And after I was back, that was about the time I probably got involved with the neighborhood house. I was a single mum, and because I had two children, I felt whatever they were involved in, I needed to be involved in. And um, I had a granny that emigrated to Canada in 1910, and her whole idea was you need to give back to the community because you're taking from it. just a small pokey little place with a couple of partitions somewhere around. I don't know how we operated so well out of there, but we did. And then there was this dream that came about that we might be able to have a building of our own and it might be large and we could do all kinds of things and it just kept growing and it was wonderful. <laughs> so I think I was on the board all the process almost of, of the building and then for a couple of years after and it was great to watch the progress being made. A lot of refuge was being dumped in the ravine. We knew this wasn't a terribly great idea and somebody started planning a weekend to clean it up and we were down to the bottom of it numerous times. Um, there were stoves and fridges that we brought out there's an old 1920s car down there which we were advised to leave in because it would tear up the ravine too badly and the ecosystem around it. We spent seven or eight years at least with one big weekend and then numerous smaller weekends where people went on their own or whatnot. I think we used to have the city bring dumpsters and we would fill the dumpsters. Eventually I met John, my second husband, and he was involved. <laughs> and lots of neighbors from around the ravine would come out for a ravine cleanup. If people really care about where they live, they will be invited in by seeing somebody else doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think it just takes a few to start. And if they are caring about their community, they will come on board. And, mm -hmm. and, and very often, I'm sure, out of the people that came to the ravine thing for a cleanup, some of them filtered their way into the neighborhood house and did something else, you know, because they had a skill that the neighborhood house could share. But they have to see those first initial people doing something. Mm -hmm. So you've got to put your stamp on it to say, this is important to me, now come. Yeah. You know. It has become far more diverse and, and probably the programs that you're offering, and I read the brochure every once in a while, allow that to happen and by the neighborhood house being inclusive, offering a variety, a great variety of things to do. We have made it so that a goodly number of members of the community feel comfortable coming and partaking. Yeah. 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 And that's important, you know. No one individual should feel shut out for whatever reason, you know. If there's something going on here and they would like to participate, they should be given that opportunity to participate. Well, you know, you know that old saying, the right, the right way or the highway, it's my way or the highway? You can't do that when you're working in a group of people. You have to think about the pros and cons of what other people are suggesting and learn to go with them. And it's probably one of the things I got out of it. Mm -hmm. that my way wasn't the only way. What does the community do to me? Well, it makes my life great. It makes me feel I'm giving something to them. I know I'm getting something back, even though it's not tangible. You know, you're getting that sense of a job well done. You're knowing that things are working well. They could probably work better, but they are working well, and you're hoping that you're leading towards better. But I have a wonderful life. I have very little to complain about. <laughs>